Hello and welcome to, ooh, bit of whiplash, welcome to Lit Film Fest Classrooms. I'm Tim and I'll be teaching you how to make a feature length film over seven weeks. It's week four and this week we're going to be reading and studying chapter three of the El Dorado book. We're going to be learning to make choices for the next scenes in our adventure and we'll be learning how to write a script for those. In the next few lessons we'll be planning and drafting and editing our scene using our choices and then finally we're going to be performing those scenes on camera. So just before we start reading chapter 3, what do you think these sentences mean? He gathered a gang of mealy-mouthed mercenaries. He to tell them it was a bog-standard treasure hunt. Louis knew that he had the bravery, strength and bloody-mindedness to win the race. So answers on a postcard, we'd love to find out, or on a Facebook postcard, <laughs> we'd love to find out what you think those phrases mean. And if you really like them, we don't mind if you borrow them. You can magpie them for your own work. But give us credit, or else... So let's continue the adventure of El Dorado in Chapter 3, Amazon Adventures. Finding El Dorado from the south would be no Morris dance. Louis Jimenez would have to cross the immense Atlantic Ocean and sail up the raging Amazon River. A river longer than all the rivers in Europe, even if they were stitched together. Then he would have to somehow survive the relentless rainforest. A rainforest with trees ten times the height of a giraffe standing on a goalpost. Rolling Eleven had been a terrible slice of luck. Unlike Solomon Clegg and his jolly flobbers, Louis preferred to work alone. However, to cross the Atlantic, he needed a crew. He gathered a gang of mealy-mouthed mercenaries, expert sailors you could trust only as far as you could throw them. Luckily, Louis could throw a man a long way. He wouldn't tell them about El Dorado. He'd tell them it was a bog-standard treasure hunt lose them in the rainforest and keep all the gold for himself. If he kept his head about him, if the map was accurate, if all went according to plan, then Jimenez would be a very happy man indeed. Getting ready to sail on the evening's high tide, his heart began to beat as though it might burst through his chest. Excited, worried, determined, Louis finally left the Spanish port of Cadiz. Adventure still made him feel that way, even after years of dangerous escapades on both sea and land. At least he had his secret weapon. Before departing, departing on his quest, Louis had been to see his friend, the King of Spain. Columbus, who wanted to thank the King for funding his first trip to the New World, had given him an entire tribe that he had captured in the Americas some years earlier. Louis asked to borrow one of them. The king graciously agreed. Louis knew he had the bravery, strength and bloody mindedness to win the race, but now he had Banneva too. Banneva, a girl of around 18 years of age, tall and dark haired, smiled at Louis. He had told her he was returning her to her home. Louis never had a problem with bending the truth. He knew that Banneva was the key to him conquering the rainforest and reaching the City of Gold first. He wasn't about to let the truth get in the way of that. You've lost already, Solomon, growled Louis, gripping the pocket that held the all-important map. Exactly one month later, map in hand, Louis was laughing with relief. He had made it to the Amazon River, and he couldn't even see the riverbanks. The river was enormous. It was at least 300 kilometres wide at one point. There was nothing to worry about here. It was just like sailing the Seven Seas. That was until the river became surrounded by a great rainforest. Massive, enormous, gigantic and imposing. Towering over them like an impenetrable army of green giants. As the river narrowed, and with the forest almost in touching distance, Louis found a place to anchor his ship and leave his crew. He packed a bag full of provisions, helped his secret weapon from the ship, and turned to the confused faces still on board. I just have to take Banneva to see her family, he lied again. Stay here and I'll be back in a couple of days. Then we will find the treasure and we'll all be rich beyond our wildest dreams. Louis and Banneva walked for days, mile after mile after mile. Louis held the map occasionally asking questions 
that would help him win the race to El Dorado. But even for someone so strong, the rainforest journey was no picnic. These are such thick, tall plants with huge spiky spikes. It's impossible to walk. Ow! Wouldn't we be quicker in the water? Be careful. The river has piranha fish. Piranha means tooth fish. Their jawbones are so strong, they can devour a human hand in five to ten seconds. Well, we'll, we'll stay in the rainforest then. It'll be safer. Perhaps. P perhaps Well, close to the river there are anacondas. A anacondas? An anaconda is a giant snake. It will wrap its body around you and squeeze until you die from suffocation. It then dislocates its jaw and swallows you whole. Hmm. Remind me never to invite you on a trip again. So, in the river, instant death by piranha. Next to the river, anacondas strangle and eat you. Let's go inland, I think. More days, more miles. Each step had Vanover believing she was nearing home. Each step had Louis believing he was nearing victory. The Amazon rainforest was now behind them. They strode north through Colombia until, finally, Louis realised that they were within a mile of victory. A hill rose in the distance. He checked the map again. Uh, 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 that, that must be it! He declared ecstatically. Banova smiled with joy and tears streaming down her face. She had waited many years for this moment, and now it had finally come. Or so she thought. Bring it on, Louis whispered under his breath. Soon, the whole world will know my name. Louis Jimenez, the richest and most powerful man in all the world. So after reading that chapter, you can see how we're pushing the characters on in their journeys. We can see Louis getting closer and closer to the goal, and you're going to be doing exactly the same in your story too today. You're going to have to think very carefully about the next choices in your story for your scene writing this week. How do your characters travel to their next destination? Just like Louis and Banova, they travel by boat. Do yours travel on some of the local transport that they picked up in the area? Do they travel by boat or by car or by helicopter? How have they got that? Is it, is it realistic in your story? How are they getting to that place? The next scene we'd like you to think about is what do they meet halfway that they have to defeat? And how do they defeat it? What would it like to be attacked by piranha in the Amazon River? Has their guide or has some of the locals warned them about it in the previous scene? Or maybe you're going to make a choice of your own based on where you've sent your group or your detectives. You might need to do a little bit of research around the country that you've sent your group to. What's dangerous there? And in scene three, we have our heroes resting for the night. Do they have to sleep in an abandoned bus? Or have they brought their own tents? And what do they do for food? Do they have to hunt wild monkeys in the Amazon rainforest to survive? Do they have to set up traps to capture food? Do they forage nuts and, and leaves? And again, maybe you need to research about the place that you've sent your group to. What kind of food could they have there in that wild place? Do they have to beg for it or go through the bins of a city? Depends where you send your group. Scene four. So what's your setting like when the heroes find out who they were invited to meet in their letter? Describe it. Is it a village? Is it a, a mountain? Is it a metropolis? Is it an urban area? Is it a farmland? It's up to you. And in scene number five, they finally meet who they're meant to. So they'll be given even more information about their ultimate goal at this point. Is there a twist? Is something going to, to change? Let's watch a short example of how that can look. On top of the tall green tropical trees, colourful bright birds soared gracefully through the clear blue sky. She sadly watched as a yellow spotted leopard devoured an innocent looking dart frog. She heard a high pitched scream. 
Turning around, Sharon saw a small cheeky wild monkey. Looking around her, she felt horrified and afraid as she spotted a vicious and angry anaconda heading straight towards her. As she saw the anaconda, her heart banged as loud as the bass drum. Then, the animal turned and slid away. James, can you swim? Mm. How close! Oh, hey, nice view, isn't it? It is a nice view. Wait, why is the floor wet? We have to jump. You first, James. What? No! Jump this the top. The group are lost and hungry and go hunting. A bird! After all that time, is that seriously all you got? Well, it's better than nothing. Come on, let's go. Getting this boat is the only way to get across the mucky river. Christopher, you need the map. I don't want to. Why is it always me? You're so lazy. I hate you. Ow! Guys, nice. Christopher, where are we? Oh, we're in the mucky river. Oh, oh, we're in the mucky river. 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 Oh, we Columbia. Hello. Hey sir, we need to. Nope. I know. There was a race for treasure. And your great times eight grandfather won. But there was no loot. Thank you. Okay, so just to recap, we'd like you to make notes on the next five scenes in your film. We'd like your group to travel to their next destination in scene one. Then we'd like them to come across a problem or a monster or a, an animal from that area to defeat or escape from. How do they do it? Do they have secret gadgets or gizmos that help them? Think about how your characters interact and, and what they already have and how you've created them. Maybe something can help them there. After this excitement in scene three, our heroes have to rest for the night. How do they rest? Where do they camp? What kind of food do they eat? Do they, have they brought something with them? How, do they have to go hunting or foraging for it? In scene four, after an early start maybe, our heroes find who they're invited to in the letter. What's the setting like? What is the place where they have been invited to to find out more information about their ultimate goal, like the gold of El Dorado? And then in scene five, they finally meet who they were meant to. What's the twist? Just like in the example that we saw, the group met the wisest man in Colombia, who told them very quickly that there was no gold in El Dorado and it was all a hoax. Also, we'd love to see your notes at LitFilmFest on Twitter, info at LitFilmFest on the old email, and also on our Facebook page, LitFilmFest Classrooms. Send them in to us and we could be celebrating them on a future episode. Also, now let's take a look at some of our fantastic work that has been celebrated and sent in to us over the last few weeks. And here we've got the diaries from Freya and Alfie. I love that in your plan, Freya, that you already know very clearly the kind of boat that you want your group to go on. It's an old-fashioned polished sailboat. Then on day two, you know that Jack gets bitten on the arm by, by a snake or anaconda. Looking forward to seeing what happens there. And then day three, you've got, you've got the group not getting along. <laughs> That's great. Same with you, Alfie, as well. You've got some clearly some great ideas here. And day two, you've got an army of ants and you've decided to draw them out. That's fantastic. Great planning. And the way that they seem to resolve that is to stay completely still or they don't get eaten. Mm, interesting. On to our good friend, Mr. Nasser. We know him well. He's got some excellent if-then sentences in his work here. He's reading his paragraph two. They get in trouble with a gang of criminals. Also, they get kidnapped and held hostage far away from where they need to be. If they made one wrong move, then they would get shot. If they offended someone, then they would never see the light of day again. Ooh, ooh, tense. And here's a letter inviting our adventurers to find the lost golden monkey. This letter is from a famous adventurer who will give each of the adventurers a thousand euros in return for finding it. That's no measly sum. Great, looking forward to seeing how your tail unfolds. 
And that's it for Lit Film Fest. You get a salute today. And that's it for Lit Film Fest Classrooms for today. Please join us at 10.30 tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Miss you all. Bye. Bye. <laughs>